All right, John's question is up next. It says, he's thinking of his parents with this question too. Dave Ramsey and others have suggested pooling social security early and just investing that. What's the money I take? Mm. Do you wait to get the full social security or do you pool early? Man, this is this is a great one. Uh, so for those of you that don't know, uh, when it comes to social security, you can actually begin drawing your benefit as early as age 62. A lot of people don't realize that. They think they have to wait until full retirement age. No, you can actually begin drawing it early. But if you begin drawing it early, you're going to get a lower benefit. Now, you're going to get it for a longer amount of time, but it's going to be a reduced benefit. And if you begin drawing early and you're still working, you can be penalized for that. You can actually you know, lose some of your benefit if you make too much money. Well, then you could wait until full retirement age, which depends on what year you were born. It's likely going to be around age 67. Or ultimately, you could wait until age 70. So there's a lot of options when it comes to when to begin drawing Social Security. And so John's question is, well, which one makes the most sense? And uh, not surprisingly, our answer is it depends. It depends on your very unique situation because there have been times, and we have clients that based on when they retired, based on their account structure, based on their need for liquidity, it made sense for them to begin drawing Social Security age 62. And then we have other clients that it made a lot of sense for them to begin drawing at full retirement age. And then yet other still, it made a lot of sense for them to wait all the way until age 70 because there are some unique benefits of waiting until 70 to begin drawing Social Security. So I think anyone who says to you, hey, there's one answer and this is the answer, and this is what you ought to do, I would begin to get a little bit nervous because I do think that, honestly, it is much more nuanced than that. It's much more dependent upon your unique circumstances. Anything you'd add to yeah. that? Well, I think we, we can throw the whole Dave Ramsey part out of there because I, I, you know, I, I know the things that we agree with Dave on, and I know the things we disagree on, but I'll be honest with you, this one kind of stumped me. I, I, I don't know that I've heard Dave talk about heard, Social yeah, Security a lot, so I just want to throw that out because I don't want to, I don't, I, you know, I don't want to throw put that put that on Dave if I've never heard it myself because everybody knows if if I if we disagree, we will share it even though we're friendly with Dave and the Ramsey Solutions Group. I, I just don't know that one, so I'm going to throw the whole Dave situation out, but. But here's what I do. I did write down, is that, and it kind of ties into what you were sharing, Bo. Is that you have to know thyself. Um, I have shared with you guys. I have a love hate relationship with Social Security. You know, my father passed away when he was 55, and since my dad was a, a salesman who never made a ton of money, and my mom was a school teacher, and their incomes were about the same, their Social Security benefit is about the same. Mm -hmm. So when my dad uh, passed away effectively all of his contributions all those decades was worthless because mm -hmm. my mom it's not like no you know it's one thing if there's a stay-at-home spouse and then you have a, a the one spouse who's working who prematurely dies and then the stay-at-home spouse just gets that that their, their spouse but if you have two working spouses and they're about the same benefit well, if you pass away prematurely you basically just got the $255 death benefit, and they're like, thank you for the six-figure contribution, contribution. To, to the Social Security Administration. Um, so for somebody like my father, believe me, I'd have much rather gotten the benefit at 62, mm -hmm. um, but he passed away at 55. So if you're a person who has health concerns and you think there's no way you're making it to full retirement age, obviously taking the benefit early is going to be a good thing. However, if you're a person who is going to be working until full retirement age. As Bo's already shared, that's like 67. You're crazy if you take Social Security early because they penalize you tremendously if you for taking that benefit. They'll actually tax you to, to, to where you almost will be like, why did I do this? Why did I take it? And I had, I had an administrator early in my career where I gave her a nice bonus because I was so proud of the year we'd had. We'd had a good year, and I wanted to pay it forward to her. But I pushed her income enough beyond Social Security's earning limits, you know, and she had already taken her benefit. That the government ended up taking the majority mm -hmm. of, my, of, of that bonus, bonus that yeah. I, that I gave her, and I was like, "Gosh, if, if that that's a that's a stinker," mm -hmm. because I wanted this to benefit her, yep. not to benefit higher taxes, just because of of, of this situation. Um, and then I want to talk about the third group. So I just talked about the person who has health concerns who might need to take it early because you're not guaranteed you're going to make it to 67. And then I want to talk, and I've talked about the middle ground as some person that's working between the early retirement of 62 
to 67 of full retirement. But there's a third group, and I, I talk about how Social Security is actually what we call longevity mm-hmm. insurance. Because there's a unique thing about Social Security is that once you reach full retirement age, if you hold off on taking it until you reach age 70, the government grows it by a guaranteed 8% mm-hmm. every year. The benefit grows by – that's a pretty substantial rate of return. guaranteed rate of return on those assets. So I always tell my, my, my clients who have decent amount of resources, I always say this is, you treat Social Security as longevity insurance is because you have this investment portfolio that has inherent risk to it. If you have Social Security, maybe you wait until 70 because it's not going to really move the needle a ton, but – if something catastrophic, a black swan event, and something just destroyed your investment portfolio, you're going to be pretty happy that you you stayed the course with Social Security and stay keeping it out there until 70 because it served as a very good, low-cost longevity insurance policy. Or if you're married, it increases the potential survivor benefit that your yeah. surviving spouse could have. So it's great for a estate planning tool. For couples who are thinking about when to begin to well, like Social there's Security. There's also tremendous planning, and this is where I do need to bring it back to it's very personal in personal finance, and the fact that it's not uncommon that everybody's completely different with their Social Security. You know, when did you start working? When did you stop working? Did you did you work for a school system or a hospital that didn't even collect Social Security? So you don't even have the quarter hours. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the, the non-working spouse, working spouse, the coordination of the two people's benefits. There is a lot of planning opportunities with Social Security. So don't just grab something you saw on YouTube mm-hmm. that you saw a commentator say and be like, that's what I'm going to do with my Social Security. Actually, make sure it reflects your financial life because you, you know, I talk about this. This is why financial planning is not going away, is because every one of you are unique. Mm-hmm. And the thing about finance, I can give you all the free advice in the world. I can even tell you all the variables that will impact you, just like I just, I just laid out for you. But you're going to get a situation where it's like, holy cow, I've never had to apply for Social Security. Mm-hmm. What do I? What am I not thinking about? And you're like, oh. This is why the abundance cycle exists. These guys, they will not only help me with Social Security, they're going to help me avoid the surcharges on Medicare premiums based upon income. They're going to help me do the Roth conversion strategy because I have all this qualified money that I don't want to pay through required minimum distributions. Oh, they're going to fulfill all of my charitable contributions. Uh, it, there's a, there's so many th- complications that come about through retirement. You don't even have to go look for it. Keep enjoying our free content, but you're going to know when life gets so complex because it, it tends to fall around success, you're going to be like, yeah, this is, this is what the guys are talking about. And that's when you can know to take the relationship to the next level.